Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I'm going to be talking about the episode from season nine, The Pledge. The Pledge was written by Kathleen Height, who wrote numerous episodes of the Waltons, and directed by Larry Dobkin, who I recently spoke about when I talked about the episode from season three, the first day when John Boy has his first day at Boatwright University. Larry Dobkin played Professor Goat in The Pledge, Mary Ellen loses Sweet Billy, one of the patients that she takes care of up in the mountains on her rounds as a nurse. This hits her really hard and she feels inadequate being a nurse and feels that if she were trained as a doctor, she might have been able to save his life. So she decides she's going to go back to school to become a doctor. This gives her numerous challenges which she has to figure out how to address in this episode. As you see Mary Ellen on her horse, there I am riding around theoretically up into the mountains. This was on the back lot in the jungle area of um, Warner Brothers Studios. <laughs> so not up in the mountains particularly at all. The cabin where I come across Sweet Billy was also on the back lot of Warner Brothers. Sweet Billy was played by actor Richard Lineback, and I recall working with him that he was just lovely, just very sweet, and played this role so well. Um, it was such an endearing character that I understand why it really impacted her to lose someone this, this kind and gentle. Uh, Mary Ellen has been helping him learn to read, so there's a, a lovely moment here where she helps him with a word that he's come across that he can't quite figure out. Sweet Billy's sister, Roni Cotter, is played by Ellen Gear. This is Will Gear's daughter, who appeared both in this episode and in an episode from season one, The Ceremony. So a real joy to have Ellen back on the set working in such a very different character from Ava, who she played in The Ceremony, but no matter what she did, she was always fabulous and I always loved working with her. She was so present and so spontaneous and her acting choices just always inspired me. In this scene, I've been having a, a just a heart to heart with my father and then Sweet Billy rides up and is quite ill and takes a fall right off of his mule. Uh, but you see the way they've shot it where the, the stacked wood is between us and where he lands. So they could uh, set up pads or things like that for him to have a much softer, safer landing off of that mule. Okay, one of my pet peeves, in, both as an actor and in watching shows, is commercial breaks, act ends that go into commercial breaks, because as actors, there's always this sort of freeze of action that happens. So here we are, we've run over because there's concern that Sweet Billy has fallen off this mule and is clearly ill. And yet Ralph and I are in this awkward moment where we're not really doing anything. We're not taking action. It's just this sort of pause, this dramatic moment before we go into commercial. And I always found those so awkward to play. And I always feel like they look so awkward when you see them. It's like, why am I not doing something to help this poor young man? But they tend to want it to just sort of have this dramatic moment. Maybe you've seen those in other shows as well. I love that in this shot here, you can see that um, Ellen has used a leather tie in her hair, which I just went, oh, how perfect, because clearly she might not have had rubber bands or certainly not scrunchies like we do today. So made perfect sense, but it just, it struck me as, oh, how great that it seems so much more authentic to have made that choice. As we go into a sequence at the Baldwin house, they show this, what we call an establishing shot of the Baldwin house. These were quite frequently used so that the audience now knows that we've gone to another location. It could be a city street, it could be the Walton house, it could be, you know, the town of Rockfish. This is a common device used in editing. In this case, I was trying to recall where the actual Baldwin house exterior was and it could have been around Midwest Street, but I have a feeling I seem to remember it being on the Columbia Ranch, which was a couple blocks away from Warner Brothers. They would have shot this probably just once because there's no people, so there's no actual action there. And it would have then become the standard establishing shot that they used for the Baldwin House whenever they wanted to use one. I always loved working with Tony Becker, who played Drew. He was with us for quite some time, and 
and he, Tony was just, he's a lot of fun. You know, I, I really enjoy him as a person and, you know, we have been friends over the years. And uh, so here, Aaron and Cindy are having some fun with Drew uh, at Elizabeth's expense. You know, it's all the men are off to war. It's like, oh, here's a man who's, you know, not off to war. And you, Elizabeth, you're going to share him with us. <laughs> So the girls have a fun moment there. Roni Cotter's Garden, where you see me speak with her a couple times during this episode, was also on the back lot of the studio where they just sort of built out a little area to have this, this patch of ground where the headstones are of the family and where she wants to bury Sweet Billy. My attention was drawn to the watch I'm wearing. I've noticed that in other later episodes and each time I see it, I, I, I think to myself, I think that was my personal watch, but that the wardrobe department felt that it was um, it was fine for the period, and so they were fine with me wearing my own watch. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was mine. There's a cute subplot with Cora Beth, who has a young soldier who has been coming in periodically to the store, and um, his mother has asked if Cora Beth will bake a cake based on her recipe for her son's upcoming birthday. And Corbeth is a little offended because in the letter, uh, she, the mother says that the son referred to her as that nice older lady. Uh, then when he comes in, Corbeth's like, no, I don't want to see him. But then he starts speaking so, so nicely about her that she, you know, that he, he says she's worldly. And so all of a sudden she's like, okay, because now it's a compliment. So she does indeed bake this cake for the young man, which is very sweet. Jason's birthday is coming up and Elizabeth has baked him a gingerbread cake that she wants to send. Uh, so she talks Aaron into, uh, into arranging for someone that she knows that has connections probably through, through Pickett, through Pickett's, um, that can get it to him in a timely fashion. But she says she's going to have to go out with him and she doesn't, She's not at all attracted to him, so but she decides to make the sacrifice. She's guilted into it. And then the Baldwins want to send Jason some of the recipe, which of course can't travel through the U.S. mail. So again, uh, Aaron is volunteered to have this contact of hers get this to Jason for his birthday, knowing that she's going to have to go out with him and you know, she's willing to make that sacrifice. I really enjoyed the scene between uh, Robert Whiteman and John Walmsley when Jason and John Boy are able to meet up and they have an opportunity to celebrate Jason's birthday. He has the gingerbread cake that was sent by Elizabeth. He has the recipe sent by the Baldwins. Man, he has, for some, some place he got also, he has a bottle of wine. Um, and so they they celebrate and I just think it's a nice moment between two brothers you know in the midst of the chaos of the war taking this moment to embrace family. The challenges and joys of working with small children um, it can be challenging because you can't always get exactly what you need from them when you need it um, because they're really not acting they're just being real. Uh, which is what's so brilliant because they do things that are just so natural. In this case, I love that uh, Ralph John Walton is is playing with John Curtis and, and with tools and showing him and letting him hammer a nail into the grass. And but then when he picks him up, you just see this this just instinctive thing where because uh, John Curtis still has the hammer in his ha hand, and while uh, John is talking with Mary Ellen, he just you know just subconsciously just takes that hammer away from John Curtis to make sure that neither John Curtis hurts himself nor that he gets hit with the hammer by him. And then there's this lovely final moment as I exit the school with John Curtis, another moment of kids just being natural. And I'm gonna take him down the stairs and he wants to jump down the stairs. So we jump down the stairs, very cute. So those are the, those precious moments of working with children who just do spontaneous things. My father is not happy with my choice about wanting to go to medical school, go back to school for years, and feels that I should be uh, there taking care of John Curtis and that being a mother is is should be my priority, which, you know, 
was a choice and is a choice that women and moms always have to make. Becoming a doctor is very important to her. So there is this conflict between Mary Ellen and her father, uh, which didn't happen a lot, but not in later seasons, but she's definitely a story point here. As things go along, Rose is willing to step up and help and, and explains to John that she feels that John Curtis will not be negatively impacted at all. He certainly knows who his mother is. Um, and then Elizabeth gives me advice and feels that I should pursue, I shouldn't give up when the dean at the school says, no, 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 you know, you're a woman and we don't, we're not gonna enroll you. You know, these only men will be allowed to go to medical school. So Mary Ellen gets very discouraged and Elizabeth steps up and gives her advice. And then Ronnie Cotter basically goads her and, you know, and into, uh, recognizing that she shouldn't give up. So everyone's pushing her in a positive way to, to really fight for what she wants and what she feels is important. And ultimately, um, you know, Mary Ellen does go back to the Dean of Admissions and really state her case and push uh, for her position and, and that she, this is important to her and she's willing to go through whatever it's gonna take to to fight the system and make her way through. And he grudgingly accepts that. And you even see a bit of a wry smile here from him as he signs off on that paperwork. And Mary Ellen has won this one. And that's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons about the episode, The Pledge. I'll be back with more Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.